morning, guys. This is Julie Jenkins, a pastor with Addiction Free in Christ. It's a ministry of miracles, ministry without walls or boundaries, a threefold ministry. Number one, helping people receive salvation through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Two, helping people receive deliverance from the slavery of addiction. And three, to receive healing in their mind, soul, spirit, and body. And this is the word for the week. So the word for this week is about how God thinks about things. What are God's thoughts? Do you ever think about what God is thinking on? I feel directed this day to go into that because uh, I myself am experiencing the grieving process of losing my husband, Pastor Gerald Jenkins, who is the executive director and president of Addiction Free in Christ and involved in many ministries throughout the years, 37 years of pastoring people with people with addictions, problems and fears. And um, so I'm going through that change in our, our ministry and my life personally of adjusting to how God wants me to move forward through the Lord. So I thought I'd just look at the thoughts of God. I know that you, like I, love God. And I want to thank you for your prayers for me and for this ministry. We need your prayers because we want to be effective and we want to move forward in the Lord by the power of the Holy Spirit. I know that you, like I, love God. And I want you to know God's thoughts are with us, as Jesus said, um, you shall, in Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. 37, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. So Jesus uh, mentions that, that commandment from Deuteronomy 6, 5, where uh, we, we are to love the Lord our God, think on his thoughts with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, to devote ourselves totally to him. And to be consecrated to him, that's what the word sanctification means in our Christian life, is to be set apart unto God. And God wants that very thing for you and I. If we occupy our, ourselves with this objective, we will also love our neighbor as ourselves. Matthew twenty-two thirty-nine 39 said, Jesus said, And the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So God comforts us with his thoughts toward us. In the Holy Scriptures, all throughout the Bible, God is speaking to you and I, his thoughts. And what wonderful thoughts they are, what beautiful, majestic, holy thoughts they are. And there's so much, like Psalm 139, I can't even attain to it. We can't even comprehend all his thoughts. They're more than the grains of sand. So Isaiah 55, I want to read that to you again. I've read it in previous videos, but it's so important. For God says, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. You who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight yourself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me here and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the sure mercies of David. Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and a commander of the people. And we know that, uh, let me stop there, and we know that King David was the grandfather of Jesus. So when we talk about that Davidic covenant, we're looking at the Messiah that was to come. Jesus, verse 5, Surely you shall call a nation you do not know, and the nations who do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. For he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Isn't that cool? God gives us victory over our thoughts, and we can forsake anything unrighteous and unhappy. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, 
and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth the bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall be not returned to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So God sends his forth his word, and it works in our lives. It works through all our lives. Day by day, it's working in your life right now. It won't return back void. That means empty, even in throughout the earth, throughout history, throughout elections. I don't care what it is. God's word is working through everything. Everything will conform to his will, and eventually we'll see that in the new heavens and new earth, the ultimate fulfillment. Then, in verse 12, God explains what is in store for his children in the future of the new of heaven and the new heavens and the new earth. For you shall go forth with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and hills shall break forth with into singing before you and the trees of the field shall clap their hands instead of a thorn shall come up the cypress tree instead of a briar shall come up a myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name and everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Second Timothy 2.19 talks about how God's thoughts on you, how he knows you. Nevertheless, it says, the solid foundation of a God stands, having this seal, the Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. You might be saying, how can I depart from iniquity? Well, all have sinned and fallen short if you read of uh, 1 John 1 and, and all through 1 John 1, 2, and 3. We've all sinned and fall short, but uh, God cleanses us by the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you walk by the Spirit and not by the flesh, you can live in that victory, better victory. And uh, you just continue to practice what God wants in your life. And I would like to share with you the seal of the Lord that you have who have believed on Jesus, and that seal is the Holy Spirit. I want to review again Ephesians 1, 2 through 14. This says, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Can you imagine God has already blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. We have that available to us today. Verse 4, Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, which he made us accepted in the beloved. So you, my dear fellow Christian, are accepted in the beloved. Praise God. You are his and you, you are his child. Praise God. Verse 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, have made known to us the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasure which he pur purposed in himself, that at the dispensation of the fullness of time he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth in him. So there's amazing thing going on in verse 10. At the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and on earth. Jesus came also to the earth at just the right time to pay for our sins, and he gathered the old covenant and the new covenant together in one. He made us one. In him, the, the people of believers of time past and believers in the future are all one in Christ. We're the body of Christ, past, present, and future. Verse 11, in him we also obtain an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him 
who works all things according to the counsel of his will. So he doesn't uh, leave anything to human beings. He doesn't have to ask to answer to a man. God is not a man that he should lie. Um, he doesn't have to look to a man. He works all things out to the counsel of his will. That's why it also says in Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. He's always working it out to his glory. Verse 12, that we who first trusted in Christ should be the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance and to the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Amen. That's a beautiful scripture. Now, if you think about that seal that we've been sealed with, the sealed with the Holy Spirit, it's kind of like uh, when you get an engagement ring from a bride gets an engagement ring from the groom, only it's, it's much stronger than that. Uh, the seal of the Holy Spirit is, is divine intervention. It's being born from above. Ephesians 1.11 says, God works all things according to the counsel of his will. He is sovereign. And that means even the enemy uh, is not in control. And we can know better. God better by yielding to the Holy Spirit and trusting and following God wholeheartedly. 2 Corinthians 2, 9 through 15 explains how the Holy Spirit works in us, revealing God's thoughts to us. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered in the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Let's stop right there. Verse 10, yes, we have access to the deep things of God. Verse 11, for what man knows the things of man except the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God that we may know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So the Holy Spirit is the decoder of the word of God and what God is speaking to us day by day. And he wants that relationship with us where we depend on him day by day through prayer, Bible study, and attending a Bible-believing church. Verse 15, But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no man. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. We have access to the mind of God, the mind of Jesus. He wants to reveal his will and his thoughts and his plans for us, which are for good and not for evil, to give us a hope and a future, even as he promised. In Jeremiah 29:11. Holy God. The Holy Spirit is our moral compass and reveals the thoughts of God to us and reveals the um, spiritual dimensions of God. There's so much more to learn in life than as we seek God's face through prayer, Bible study, and attending, like I said, a Bible-believing, full Holy Spirit church. A car has an owner's manual. In order to access all that your automobile can do, you must read the owner's manual, as Pastor Jerry used to say all the time. <laughs> so also God has an owner's manual. It's the Holy Scriptures, the Bible, that reveal the thoughts and the plans of God that fill us with all wonder and excitement and joy of the Holy Spirit. Romans 10, 17 says, So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So you can listen to the Word of God through 
all kinds of wonderful tools, television, CDs, uh, media of all kinds. They even have apps for your cell phone that you can, uh, like faithcomesbyhearing.com. They have uh, free Bibles that you can listen to and where it's just the audio speaking to you. And a lot of people listen to it before they go to sleep at night. And they say it's very refreshing. Colossians 1, 3 through 6 says, um, We give thanks to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and our love for all the saints because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the word of truth of the gospel, which has come to you. It is also in all the world and is bringing forth fruit as it also among you since the day you heard of it and knew the grace of God. So I want you to beware of the hope that is laid up for you in heaven. This world, you'll, you can watch the news and get so distraught over what's happening throughout the world. But we need to pray for um, for our nation and for um, Israel, for peace in the Middle East. It says pray for the peace in Jerusalem and for God's will to be done. Our comprehension of the thoughts of God bring forth heavenly fruit because of the hope laid up for us in heaven. So if you haven't done so already, I want to ask you now to put your hope in the completed work of Jesus Christ for you on the cross and comprehend the love of God for you, that he would sacrifice his only son to take away your sins so you just say, Jesus, come into my life. I thank you for taking my sins on the cross. I thank you that you saved me. I make you the Lord and Savior of my life, my personal Savior. As you do that, you will receive the Holy Spirit of God. And this is the promise to be born from above that Jesus gave us. And you are his. You know, God set a seal upon you. The Lord knows those are his. You have a hope laid up in heaven. First Peter, the first chapter says, you are kept by the power of God. Romans 10, 8 through 13 says, but what does it say? The word is near your mouth and in your heart. That word of faith, which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Verse 12, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's that simple. Jesus explains being born above through the Holy Spirit. In John 3, 3 through 7, Jesus said to Nicodemus, and said to him, and he was speaking to Nicodemus, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot save the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel. When I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, so you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone born of the Spirit. So we aren't even directed by ourselves. We are temples of the Holy Spirit, and God directs us where we are to go. He ministered to the eunuch that was visiting about the scriptures. He ministered to him, and then all of a sudden he vanished and was gone in another area. Philip didn't even know where he was going to be that day. God just just took him, and he sent him where he wanted him to go. And then he was found in another location. 2 Corinthians 1, 18-22 explains the love and faithfulness of God so that we never need doubt God again as long as we live. Precious believer. Verse 18 says, But as God is faithful, 
our word to you is not yes and no, for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me, Silvanus and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him was yes. For all the promises of God are in him yes, and in him amen to the glory of God through us. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ has anointed us in God who has also sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Let us go to the Heavenly Father in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, how magnificent your thoughts that you, an eternal divine God, would share with us your thoughts through the Comforter that dwells within us, the Holy Spirit, that you have not left us as orphans, but you, that we are your beloved children, and have all the precious promises of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who has set his seal on us. The Lord knows those who are his. Thank you, creator of all things, for bringing the holy scriptures to us, your Bible, and help us to grow in the love and knowledge of you. We pray for healing right now of the mind, soul, and body of all those who are listening Pray for a supernatural divine healing. We thank you that you love us and we thank you and we pray according to your will, Lord. In your son's Jesus name we pray, amen. And let me close with one scripture, 1 John 3, 1 through 3, to encourage you. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it does not know him. Beloved, we are children of God. It has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has the hope in him purifies him just as he is pure. Amen. Well, Thank you for watching. Please call if you need prayer or if you just need someone to talk to. Please call us for prayer or for any biblical help, biblical counsel at 217-617-5577. That's 217-617-5577 partners around the world that will pray for you just your first name only and god bless you thank you for watching i have uh some people i would like to thank and uh, i'd like to thank mark of ormond beach florida and our faith foundation partners and viewers like you for making these programs possible i'm praying for you thank you for watching god bless you In Jesus' name, amen.